Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's Fat Ryland here, and today I have a very special video for you. It's a beginner's guide to technical analysis. I know a lot of you guys are interested in technical analysis, so I thought, you know, I'd help you guys get started. And within this video, it's gonna give you like a basic understanding of technical analysis, so you can start looking at graphs and understand what's going on. Obviously, this isn't gonna go completely in depth. I could do another video where I go really in depth, but that'll be a much, much longer video. The idea is it's gonna be a relatively short video to get you guys started with technical analysis. A few of you guys are probably wondering, where the hell have you been, Ryland? The lockdown restrictions within the UK have been easing up, so I've been getting very, very busy with my job, with uh, other side things that I got going on, so it's been quite hard to make YouTube videos. But I'm back again, and I'm bringing you a video that I hope you find interesting. Took a lot of time, so if you do find some use or value in it, like, comment, and share. If you find uh, you know people, other people that are willing to or wanting to learn technical analysis, by all means, do share it with them and uh, spread the love. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out before we get started. Number one, I am not a financial advisor. None of what I say or do is financial advice. Number two, if you are interested in buying some cryptocurrency, feel free to use my Binance link down below. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So you might be asking me, why technical analysis, Rylan? I see a lot of people in the comments going, technical analysis is useless. Oh, nothing ever happened. You don't know what's going on, this, this, that, and the other. And yet technical, the whole point of technical or any analysis, right? You don't know 100% what's gonna happen. If people knew 100% what was gonna happen, if anyone who learned technical analysis would be billionaires, but that's not the case. It's making use of probabilities. Okay, it's hit this support. Chances of this bouncing off this support are high. I'll buy in at this time. Or it's hitting this resistance. The chances of this bouncing and reversing off this resistance are high. Therefore, it might be a good time to sell. That's what technical analysis is. Technical analysis isn't predicting the future. Technical analysis is something that you can harness in order to find good opportunities to buy and good opportunities to sell. And that's why I learned technical analysis and the gains I started to make as a result of learning technical analysis substantially grew, right? I was finding better times to buy, better times to sell, maximizing my profit. If you have a similar outlook, if you're not one of those naive ones who expect technical analysis to predict the future, and you want to have learn this skill to benefit your not just crypto assets but your stocks whatever it may be then this is the video for you without further ado let's get into it what i'm going to start off by doing is giving you an overview of the candlesticks because a lot of people especially when they start out they look at the trend lines and in my personal opinion the trend line is not amazing to use because there's very little information well especially when you compare it to candlesticks there's very little information right i'm going to use the bitcoin chart i've got a clear bitcoin chart here and i'm going to use the bitcoin chart within trading view if you guys don't have trading view trading view is fantastic it is free to use there are paid paid versions trading view is fantastic a fantastic tool so look at this like an introduction and tutorial on trading view as well when it comes down to candlesticks there's a few key things that you should know there's obviously the green candles and the red candles and um, i'm sure most of you guys know green means it's going up red means it's going down right let's zoom into these candles okay looking at this a little bit closer we can see there's two main components of this candle there is the body of the candle in both scenarios and there is the wicks right you can see the lines going across now the next thing i wanted to highlight is the fact that i have this set to days right you can change the time frame here you can go four hours and then the candle slightly change you might need to zoom in or zoom out but i'm going to keep it on the daily candle for now i'll go into the other time frames in a second but this effectively means that each candle depicts one day so effectively the bottom of the body indicates the opening price and on this particular day on the 24th of may we opened at 34,000 around $34,700. The top of the body indicates the closing price. At the end of the day, it closed at 38,818. The bottom of the wick indicates the lowest price that it got to within that day. So in this case, it went down to 34,400, around 400, 34,400. And the top of the wick, as you can see here, indicates the highest price that it got to on that day. So in this case, this was 39,887. Now, if I take a look at the red candle, it's basically the reverse. The top of the body is the opening price, right? On this particular day, so the 23rd of May, the price started at 37,463. The bottom of the candle is the price it closed at. So it, on this day, it closed at $34,675. The bottom of the wick indicates the lowest price that it got to on that particular day. So that's 31,000, around 31,000. And the top of the wick indicates the highest price that it got to on that particular day which was around 38,271. So the idea is if it's a green candle, it closes 
the candle higher than it opened. If it's a red candle, it closes the candle below what it opened at. So if I were to change this to a four hour time frame, and when you change these time frames, the candles get a little bit skewed or whatnot. And if this is happening, you just simply zoom out or you can go to the far right hand corner where the price is and you can drag it to extend those candles out or you can pull along the X axis to drag the candles out. Now in this scenario, each candle is a four hour candle. If I were to look at this candle, we can see the price opened on the 27th of June, 2021 at nine o'clock at $32,798. It went as high as, if we look, you can see a tiny little wick to the top there to 34,700. It closed the candle at 34,720. It did go as low as $32,378. On the next, you can see how this one was at nine o'clock. And then obviously the next candle starts at one o'clock, four hours after. So the price, because it's a red candle, the top indicates the opening price. So it opened at 34,709. It closed at 34,426. It went as high as 34,972 and it went as low as 34,279. I hope that makes sense. So obviously as you change these time frames, one hour, you're getting even each candle depicts one hour and you basically, as you lower the time frame, it gives you more information, right? However, more information doesn't necessarily mean better. I tend to not go any lower than one hour time frames, and one hour is only when I'm doing leverage trading, which I definitely don't recommend if you're just trying to learn. Leverage trading is very, very risky. I just do it for a bit of fun. I do make some substantial gains, but it's very, very risky. I mean, you can make, say you started off with $100, you could turn that into $10,000 and you could lose it just as quickly. It's crazy. You need to be very proficient in technical analysis to leverage trade successfully. Even the one hour time frame, I only really use when I'm leverage trading. I normally stick to the four hour time frame or the daily time frame. The daily is what I most commonly look at and the daily candle will be what we use for the majority of this video. But the daily is a very, very good way of identifying what's happening day to day, finding key resistances, good areas to buy from, and is fundamentally great for those who are long-term holding. Now, one key thing that I wanna highlight is the significance of the wick. I'm not gonna go into super detail regarding the candlestick patterns. I'll leave a quick little diagram for you. So screenshot it, pause the video, so you can see the different patterns and what they indicate. But one key thing that I do wanna point out is the significance of price rejection. We see these long wicks. These long wicks are a good indicator of strong price rejection. Just for, the, for this example, I'm just gonna highlight these two candles here, right? We can see here with this candle on the 22nd of June and with this candle here on the 25th of June, we have these big long wicks and these wicks are a good indicator of strong price rejection. The price has gone as low as 28,600, but the price has been very quickly bought up, eaten up all the way up, and the price has actually closed at 32,526. Now, you, this is usually an indicator of strong price rejection, and we can see this strong price rejection was followed by a little rally up as high as 35,499. We can then see how we got this double, two long wicks, indicating we've had two consecutive days where we've tried to break past this level, failed, we got price rejection from here, indicating another price reversal. We can see that we then came crashing down as low as 30,000. Yet again, we can see here, we came as low as 30,000, nice long wick, eaten up, and we finished at 32,295. After which we had a rally all the way up to 36,603. So one tactic that you could potentially use is look out for these nice long weeks in either direction, which could indicate a price reversal. Like on this day, we had a price rejection here on two consecutive days, these wicks going up, and then we had a cascading effect below. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more things you can look at, but this is just an, a thing that I wanted to point out. And it has been useful for me seeing these big long wicks indicating a little change in the price. Now, what I'm gonna do now is highlight the significance of supports and resistances. I'm just gonna show you my normal chart here. And I know if you're new to technical analysis, this probably looks absolutely crazy. I mean, especially if I start adding all my simple moving averages, if I've, 
that probably looks like an absolute <laughs> nightmare to you. Don't worry, it's all gonna be explained in a second, but these effectively, all these lines, all these, what they basically are, are support lines and resistance lines, right? We've got them in the form of trend lines, we have them in the form of horizontal boxes, so I'm going to start creating some supports and resistances for you on this fresh chart. Now, one thing a lot of people I know start doing is uh, go to the weekly and create some very strong levels of support and resistance, right? So when you look at the weekly chart, these are weekly candles, right? And the, the significance with the time frame, you know, the longer the time, obviously the shorter the time frame, obviously the more information, but the longer the time frame, the more significant, right? That the more significant that information is, if that makes sense. So with weekly candles, we're going to get very, very strong areas of resistance and support, if you will, right? If you're looking at, and so, so say if you get confirmations, especially on the daily or what uh, of a breakout, a close of, of a candle on, say, an hour time frame is less reliable than a candle closing on the daily or the weekly, right? I hope that makes sense. One thing you could do, you could start on the weekly, but I like starting on the daily. I find the daily is very reliable in itself. So as you already mentioned, each candle represents a day. Now, what I like doing, if you click the little arrow here, you'll be able to select horizontal line. Now, I can start finding areas where, you know, the price finds significant resistance or the price finds significant support. So we're gonna start off with just horizontal lines of support and resistance. When I say support, this is an area where there is a lot of buying pressure. When I say a resistance, this is an area with a lot of selling pressure. As an example, we're gonna go into this little consolidation over here. This was in January, 2021. We had a little bit of a crash, uh, 30 odd percent correction. And we found a solid area of support around the 30K mark. And when you're looking at creating supports and resistances, I recommend looking towards where the candle is closing. The price hit 27,797. Now, I don't usually just put a support there. If we look more closely, we, we don't have, oh yes, we got one more wick into this zone. We've got some resistance here. But if we look even more closely, we can see that although the price goes this low, it seems to be pushing itself above a certain threshold. And that certain threshold seems to be around the 30K mark. As you can see, we didn't, after we broke past this level with this significant candle close above, we didn't close a single daily candle below the 30K mark. So that indicates that the $30,000 mark is a very strong support. As soon as it hits $30,000, a lot of people are starting to buy. I'll put a little line here and you can change the color by pressing this. So if it's a support, you change it to green. But I like to create support and resistance regions for me. I feel like they act more like regions than specific lines. I can see, okay, this, this line clearly is an area of support. We can take it from this bottom wick here. And now we can sort of see how this area, we got a wick in here, which was eaten up, a wick in here, eaten up, wick again, wick again, wick again, and the candles closing. This seems to, this area between 30, 000, around 29,308 to 30,737, this seems to be a very significant area of support right? We can then see as well how this area was also acting as a resistance. And this is one of the key things to remember. The stronger something is as a resistance, the stronger it acts as a support. And likewise, the stronger something was acting as a support, the stronger it acts as a resistance. We can see how we got a wick, reject, wick in, rejected. We tried a little candle close and then we had this significant, huge volume entering and we closed a daily candle above. Then we had this retest of this area. You can see this, right? We retested this area which was very quickly eaten up. We had another confirmation. We had that wick into this area yet again, and then we started moving up from there. So what I, and then obviously, as you can see, it has acted as a support ever since. So what I like doing is going to this brush icon, clicking the arrow, creating a rectangle, and taking it from here to here. So we create this little zone. Obviously it's red at the moment. You can change it by using that fill to green. And then if you want to change the outline, you could change the outline by clicking the line tool colors. Obviously you could change the thickness of the lines, whatever you want to do. But then I like to keep it nice and clean. I like removing these lines. And then now we can see how this little region between 29,308 and 30,702 has been a very strong support. We had resistance within this region, right? 
we closed that candle significantly above retest retest rejecting strong price rejections like i mentioned earlier we got these long wicks strong price rejections for lower prices and then we started to explode right and then as you can see when we crashed down we wicked into this zone quickly eaten up and then we can see how this area here right we can already start seeing that how this area is probably another area of support so we can also add that in right we can click okay this area of support we've got loads of wicks here which touch this area we can see how this area was also a resistance support right and then we can take it to how this area because you can see how resistance we've got this wick here let me zoom in a little bit for you we can see how we had a wick here rejected wick all the way up close below wick again then we close the candle above we then broke above retested this area you can see that wick coming in right for support before moving up further then we take it further back we can see wick closed above wick closed above wick wick then when we broke below we had a significant candle closing below that's when you when you're breaking through a support there needs to be something significant for me to really take that on right and then we had the retest of that previous support as a resistance and then you can see how this was a resistance and we came down to test this area for support again before finding the necessary buying momentum to take us above we had this huge wick up here a little bounce retest for support and then we exploded so what i'm going to do again is like I did before, create that rectangle. This is me creating this as a support, thinking this is going to be an area here, like where our price is here, right? Obviously, if the price is here, this is a resistance. So I would change this fill to a red, right? If the price is below, these areas will act as a resistance. The price is above, this area will act as a support. So as you can see, the price right now is sitting at 31,735. So this is a resistance at the current time of speaking. This resistance and this support was taken from price action that occurred back in January. Now, let's see how it fared within the last few months when we had this huge crash. And we can see how this these areas acted as a heavy support when the price was collapsing. We can see that huge wick. Look exactly where it bounced off. Within the, exactly within that region, it bounced, came back up. We had another bounce into this wick, exactly into this region, come back out. We've got another witch which came into this region and closed above. Two consecutive wicks over here, right? Bounce from here. We've got the wick below, but we closed the candle within this region. It acted as a heavy support and we had a rally up, right? Then when we came back down, now we can start seeing how these candle wicks are getting eaten up above this area of support, right? So that's one key thing to remember. Supports from back in two, three years ago, they still apply. You could drag it straight along. They will act as support and resistances. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just going to add one more resistance just because I added this in the middle, which look uh, where this region, because it was a support here. It's currently a resistance just because the price is below. But let's look for another resistance, right? So one key resistance I can see, a very, very strong resistance is this one. We can see three daily or four daily candles, right? Wicks, pick up, rejected wick up rejected wick up rejected wick up rejected so for four days it tried to break that forty thousand threshold failed and then subsequently we, we had a huge crash after this is very clearly an area of resistance now i'll take it from to the top of the wicks here change this to red if you want and then if you want to do what I do, and we can see this area was a strong resistance. We struggled to close a candle above that 40K mark. And then we had initial price rejection here. Then we had this significant candle close above and we carried on moving up. And if I were to see how this resistance acted since that date, we can see where well, we got that resistance here. On the way down, we had this significant candle close below. And look at that one candle. It tried to go, and I wasn't even using these candles to draw this i was using the candles earlier we can see how we had the candle wick go above rejected candle closes below yet again candle wick above candle closes ends up closing below we have this wick in rejected right yet again rejected and we can see how previous price action the supports and resistances can be used to find the support and resistances that are 
occurring right now. Hopefully that gave you a little understanding on how horizontal supports and resistances worked. This in itself is a very fantastic, like you could end the video now. Obviously I'd rather you not, I'd rather you watch the whole video, sort out the algorithm, share the video, this, that, and the other. Just by knowing how horizontal supports and resistances work, this is how a lot of traders trade. A lot of my friends who are in investing, who trade, who do are involved in CFD or leverage trading, they just use horizontal supports and resistances. They buy on solid horizontal supports. They sell at solid horizontal resistances. But you can take this further. For example, another tool that I use, and like I said, I'm not gonna go into every single tool I use. I'm just gonna use the most useful ones that I, I think you will find a lot of benefit in. And that is the fib retracement. The fib retracement is really good for two things. And when you're drawing out a fib retracement, you basically go from the swing high. So over here, we can see it was around $65,000. And we, take the low all the way down to the swing low, right? Which was around, in this case, 28,691. When you create these fib retracements, always check, right? And you can see how we've got like the 0 0.786, 0 0.618, 0 0.5, 0 0.382, 0 0.236. These all act as resistances and supports, right? So we can see how, if we zoom in here, we can see how this 0.236 fib level was acting as a resistance. We came above, it acted as a support. We can see how it's acting as a support here. We can see how the 0 0.382 acts as a resistance. You see how we bounce off that line? How it acts as a support. We take it here. We can see how the 0 0.618 acts as a resistance. We got the handle wicks going up here. And then how the 0 0.5 was acting as a support. The fib retracement can be used to identify other areas of horizontal support and resistances as well as price prediction. This is particularly useful when you're going into uncharted territory. You have no previous data to go off to find resistances and supports. So we can see how, okay, we have no previous data. One way where I can find where people will potentially sell is using the fib retracement because other people use the fib retracement too. Right? So we can see that 1.618 put in uh, BTC price at $87,462. I would expect some price rejection here. If I take it further up, 2.618. This is another possible area where I would expect some resistance. Then 160,000 at the 3.618 level and then 182,000 at the 4.236 level. Now this is not saying that there won't be resistances between these zones. Of course there will be, there'll be selling pressure within these zones, but this is a way of identifying, okay, this could be a potential price that we could look at. Okay, we hit this price. We're using this as a solid support. We could start looking towards this. The next thing that I wanted to highlight is the use of patterns now or trend lines. So you'll see in my chart, I've got all sorts of lines going everywhere. I usually delete previous patterns but I have significant trend lines. So in this in instance, you can see this strong green line going here, this red line going here. I've also got a descending channel over here. We've got these lines coming. I know it probably looks a bit crazy, but patterns can also help. A lot of people don't get involved in patterns because like I said, horizontal supports and resistances are enough. But for this example, I'm just going to show you just one pattern, just to give you an example. Because if I wanted to go through all of the patterns, we'll be here all day. And you probably don't want to be sitting in front of a video for so many hours. But one example I'm going to show here is I'm going to just, just for the time being, I'm not going to create that region. I'm just going to have this horizontal line here. This is a clear area of support. Now, if I were to then click on the arrow and then trend line, I can create a line like so. And this is known as a descending triangle. Now this is typically a bearish pattern. We, there's a higher probability of this breaking down than breaking up, but as you can see, in this case, we broke up. And this pattern, I want you to notice how the top of the trend line was acting as a strong resistance. Every time we hit the top of the trend line, we saw a significant price rejection, right? And we can see how this green line here, forming the bottom of the, bottom of the descending triangle, was a very, very strong support. We were bouncing up and down, trading within this pattern, and then you can see we got the breakout, we broke above, we tested this line as a support and we got the go ahead, we started moving and absolutely exploded. And that's normally what happens with these patterns. You normally, if you get these pattern forming, patterns are where consolidation happens because nothing can go straight up, nothing can go straight down. They need to sort of move sideways in one way or another. And these patterns form areas where people are selling, areas where people are buying. And it's basically a region in which people are trying to identify clear areas of support and resistance, see whether there are more bulls in the market than bears or more bears in the market than bulls. And once you've got the confirmation, okay, there's more bulls or there's more buyers, we can go up or there's more sellers, we need to go down. 
then the confirmation obviously being the breakout of the pattern usually you get a nice retest and that retest is usually a good buying opportunity right we break above we've got a significant can look at that candle above i mean yes it did get rejected we got a retest rejection retest retest okay this might be a good time to buy and off we went and these, these there's loads of these patterns that occur like i said i'll put them up again in front of the screen so do take a screenshot take a, a pause the video whatever you want to do but there are so many different patterns and the thing i would recommend most is to if you want to learn these patterns actually start seeing them because they might be very difficult for you to identify and see when you start out thing that really helped was watching other people do technical analysis when you see their thought process how they go through technical analysis you'll start to understand what how how it works you start to see patterns you start to see their mode of thinking and that's when i started noticing the patterns more and more it went from not being able to identify anything it's just a bunch of gibberish on the chart to instantly being able to see patterns on the screen and the other thing that i think is very important to know is trend lines. trend lines are super important the reason being and i'm just going to use this example here because i've got two very significant trend lines i've got this green line you can see extending all the way along and then i have this red line here and we can see how this green line is a very strong support we got bounce we come up bounce 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 then we can see how we went up we found heavy resistance on this red line then we came back down i've drawn this white trend line that you can see we found support here we went up found resistance exactly on this trend line again right then we came back down moving up and then on our way down i want you to notice how this green line was a very strong support it acted as a very strong support yet again we did break down just below we quickly broke above we started using it for support then we broke down yet again then we retested it as a resistance you can see how we bounce exactly off that green line come back down and then we went for it again you can see that rejected again and this is the situation i'll talk about the stronger something is as a support the stronger it acts as a resistance if we break below the stronger something is as a resistance the stronger it will act as a support if you break above hopefully that makes sense obviously i could go into a lot more detail here really go through the patterns such as you can see this descending channel here strong resistance here support resistance support uh, just broke above couldn't find support so we came back down so on so forth but we would be here all day there's so many different patterns hopefully you get the gist I, I, i'll put like i said i'll put the patterns up on the screen so do be sure to screenshot it or pause the video and like i said i recommend watching technical analysis other people doing technical analysis to really get the gist of it now what i'm going to quickly finish up with is some useful indicators that i personally use which you might find useful as well now i am a strong strong believer of price action over indicators right uh, there's some other people who use just purely indicators basically they just look at all these different indicators and they're like okay the price is going down or the price is going up but for me i think the price action is the most important thing solid areas of support and resistance are what are the most important things but indicators help now today i just wanted to highlight the two main indicators that i use which you might find very useful the first being moving averages if you want to add any indicators you simply go into indicator you type in within the search um so in my case sma by kgs and then you can add the indicator here here i've already got it added so i'm not going to add it again now if we show okay that looks a little bit crazy so what i'm going to do is just show simple moving averages for now now the sma effectively calculates average of a selected range of prices by the number of periods within that range now the smas that i personally use are the 10 day 20 day 50 day 100 day and 200 day sma obviously have a look at online there's plenty of different people use different things but i find those being very valuable to me right and there's a few ways you can use smas and emas the emas act in this similar sort of manner so if i were to go back to settings if i turn the emas on i've got ema stands for exponential moving average and the ema effectively tracks the price of an investment over time now the emas that i personally use are the 8 13 21 and 55 day emas what i'm going to do is go back to the simple moving averages and show how i use moving averages to help me with my technical analysis now effectively these are other forms of resistances and support and at the end of the day this is basically what technical analysis is is finding good areas of resistance and support and just collating all this information to find good times to buy good times to sell right? there's two things i want you to consider one is that these act like supports and resistances so let's say for example you can see how this 200 day simple moving average right if we look at the 200 day the black line the longer the time frame of the moving average usually the stronger the support of the resistance it is and we can see how when we started crashing down this was a monumental crash obviously with all the bad fud that was coming out and then we retested as a resistance retested the 200 days of resistance again and carried on moving down 
Now, another thing to note is when a shorter time frame crosses below a longer time frame, that's usually not a good sign. That's bearish. It's indicating that the short term price action is not looking very good. So you can see how the 10 day crosses below that 100 day simple moving average and the moment of the crossing, we can see monumental crash to the bottom. Yet again, we can see how the 10 day crosses below the 200 day, we started crashing down. You can see yet again, how the 50 day crosses below the 200 day, we had some price movement downwards. Likewise, if it happens in the opposite direction, if this 10 day were to cross above, say the 50 day or the 10 day were to cross above the 100 day or the 200 day, that's more bullish, right? It's indicating that the shorter term price action is indicating upwards momentum. That's one way in which I use the moving averages. You can use them as lines of resistances or support, as well as identifying good opportunities to buy and sell when there is a crossing between a shorter time frame over a longer time frame. Now, the next indicator that I use is the relative strength index. The relative strength index is a momentum indicator which measures the magnitude of recent price changes effectively helping you identify whether a stock asset or cryptocurrency is overbought or oversold now you can see the relative strength index down here at the bottom and you can see how we move sort of move up and down right if we take it all the way out we can see how we sort of come from the bottom to the top to come back down a little bit then top so on so forth right and what this like i said indicates is the magnitude of the price action seeing whether it is oversold or overbought now when we are above 70, right? If we're above 70, like you can see the line goes here, we can see the black line. These regions indicate that we're starting to become overbought. Now, if we look at more recent price action, you can see here, right at the top here, we hit 88, very, very overbought, which effectively means there's so many people buying, right? Basically a lot of buyers, a lot of people hold it it's overbought it's going at them the magnitude of the price change is so great that it becomes overbought that means there's a lot of people who could sell and what happened we hit this region and we hit a, we had a monumental price crash right we came very we went from as high as 42,000 to as low as 28,000 now let's look at it from another perspective we went as low as 16 this indicates we are very oversold so many people have sold it not many people have it there's not much more room but downwards momentum crashed all the way down to here and we can see the price of bitcoin at three thousand seven hundred and thirty four dollars if i were to zoom in you can see that right thirty seven three thousand seven hundred sixty seven after we hit this zone we went all the way up to the top here to the overbought region so we went as high as ten thousand about uh, uh, around a 3x on your investment so you can see how just by using the rsi we can start making good or bad purchases on stock or asset whatever it may be the idea is when you're looking to buy into an investment you don't really want to be buying when we are sitting above the 70 mark the rsi is something that changes when you change your time frame i tend to look at daily and above right that that is the best indicators for me i tend to see good opportunities when we hit this below this 30 mark, as you can see here, which we did uh, on the 19th of May. We had this huge crash where the price went as low as 29,804. We hit this oversold region and you can see how we went as high as 41,525. A fairly substantial profit just by identifying that it was oversold and buying in, right? So this is another indicator that I, I recommend using. When we hit below 30, good time to potentially good time to buy. When we hit above 70, potentially bad time to buy another thing that i wanted to highlight is how you can measure bullish and bearish divergences using the rsi an example of a very bearish divergence that occurred recently is what happened with the recent bitcoin price action you can see how we clocked slightly higher highs in the actual price but if we go to the relative strength index we can see we clocked lower lows now this indicates a bearish divergence meaning the indicator is insinuating we are likely to go down and look what happened we hit that price and we had a monumental correction likewise if the r if the price action is showing lower lows like we are right now but the rsi is forming higher highs that's an indicator of a bullish divergence obviously nothing has happened yet but this could be a bullish divergence forming on the bitcoin chart Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. That was just a quick introduction on technical analysis. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, 
and share. Share this video with anyone who is interested in learning about technical analysis because you guys already know about this channel. I'm here to help people. And that is the fundamental goal. It's not just a crypto channel. People might misconceive this just as a crypto channel. I know there's a lot of crypto videos, but this the aim of this channel is to help people, whether it be financially, whether it be just in other aspects of life. That is the fundamental aim. Hopefully you found some use in it. It's been Fat Ryland, and I will see you in the next video.